Uh, what an unbelievable game with everything riding on it. Um, to have a team that has been beaten up from the beginning to come through the storm and be here on this day to have an opportunity to showcase who we are to the nation against one of the top teams in the country for the second time around, uh, it's pretty amazing. It's, it's a great day. That's all I can say to be a Tiger because we definitely put ourselves in a situation where we can be proud of, should be proud of today. Penny, you mentioned the pride and showcasing your team. From where you guys started the season to now finishing, winning 10 out of the last 11 and setting yourself up for March, do you feel vindicated at all? Man, I, I just I feel blessed, to be very honest with you, because the guys came together at the right time. Um, the staff came together at the right time. It just seemed like, and I called it like spiritual momentum. It just seemed like everything started to happen kind of spiritually for our team with the prayers and with the the understanding of where we wanted to be, guys leaving egos at the door, and the entire building coming together as one. Hey, Coach, you started the season with a, a message called Tunnel Vision. How were you guys able to block out all the noise, all the pressure leading up to this game and come out and come up with the energy you did first half and second half? Yeah, well, we understood what the mission was, and the guys carried out the mission. The way that we can lock in is we was doing every, every game 1-0. and We weren't looking ahead. We were just staying in the moment and putting ourselves in that in that position for every game to go out there and compete. And through this whole entire run, there was only one really ugly game, and it was at SMU. And uh, everything else has been beautiful. So for us, we just basically locked down and really just kind of relied on one another and, and, and just kind of put it all out on the line. You guys have obviously been playing pretty well down the stretch, but from the opening tip, it seemed like you guys were on the mission. Do you feel like this was probably the best game you guys played this season? Yeah, I think this was one of them for sure. I mean, with the team, the way that they played defense, I think the Alabama game was pretty good because they were coming off beating Houston and Gonzaga, and they had a they were on a high. This game, pretty good because we know who Houston is. So this is up there probably 1A as far as a win this year. Penny, I know you said uh, last time we were here that you felt you had done enough to get in. After this game, is there any doubt that they can't keep you out now? I hope not. Uh, I really, I mean, the BPI, when you're looking at the, the percentages of the teams that they think can win the national championship, they have Houston two under Gonzaga. So it'd be the team that plays that hard and is that good two times in two weeks. I think we deserve to be in. Penny, uh, <clears throat> what went into the, whose idea was it to, take the mic after the game to sort of thank the crowd. And what was that moment like for you looking out at the sea of white? My trusty guy right here, Michael. He was the guy that came up to me and said, do you want to speak to the fans? And I'm glad he caught me because I wasn't thinking about that. Maybe I would have thought about it later. Well, Michael was the one to um, tell me, hey, do you want to you want to speak to the fans? And I, absolutely, what, for sure. What was that like? I mean, just looking out and... I almost got emotional and I don't even know why. I mean, honestly, I just, I guess the whole entire season flashed in front of me and then the fans were in there cheering and just wanted to... Man, it was really a surreal moment because they came out because they knew how much we needed them, and they came out and supported us in Tiger fashion. And then one, one question about Tyler and Alo. Um, you've played them a lot together during this winning streak. In years past, that hasn't you know teams have been able sometimes to take advantage of that, but it seems like down in this run they've played really well together. It's been a nice lineup for you. I'm curious, what do you think's changed for those two playing them together? I think their knowledge of what teams are going to try to do to both of them during the games has changed. They understand going into the game what could possibly happen. Our defenses have changed as well to protect Tyler or protect him. And they're committed to rebounding now. At first they really weren't committed to rebounding. Now they're like, okay, we're going to play defense. We're going to take charges. Now we have to be committed to rebounding the ball. So – that's what's changed with those two guys. And they have so much pride, they put it all out on the line today. Penny, you said the season kind of flashed in front of your eyes out there. I'm, I'm curious, what are some of the things that you saw? Uh, what, what are some of the high points that, that co immediately come back to you? Man, immediately the four-game losing streak at the beginning of the year with Iowa State, Georgia, Ole Miss, and Murray State flashed right in. And then the three-game losing streak – uh, when the conference, you know, at UCF, uh, at home against SMU and at ECU, those games flashed right in, right in, in there, and it was just man, how far we've come. We're a totally different team. You know, I was listening to this motivational speech uh, because I've started doing it before every game, just going on YouTube and listening to these motivational speeches, and 
I can't remember the guy's name, but he said people always want to put you back where you were when you were doing at your worst times. And they always give you a mirror so you can look at who you used to be. And in God's world, he wants you to view it as a window so you can pass right by it and not look at the mirror and look back. We're not who we used to be. So listening to that today kind of motivated me. Like, we aren't who we used to be. So when I got on the mic, it was just emotional a little bit because I know how hard we worked to get to this point. How long do you celebrate this before? Because, I mean, you got still business to take care of. Uh... I mean, we don't want to be so shallow to where we're not celebrating victories because it's, it's been a long season. We do know we have to go to the AAC tournament and still represent what we've already shown. We're not relaxing by any means, but we're going to enjoy this one. You know, to beat Houston two times in one season with everything on the line. We can enjoy this one today and possibly be off tomorrow, but then it's right back to work. Looking out at that crowd and seeing that scene today, Penny, is that what you envisioned when you took this job in the first place, bringing this back and getting delivered back to the tournament? Absolutely. That's that's real Tiger basketball. And I'm glad that the guys didn't, that didn't get a chance to see that last year or, or, or even this year because of the COVID restrictions and things of that nature, that they actually saw Tiger basketball. This is what I'm used to. And it feels good to be to be back here. Penny, how much personally did you take it just when this team was struggling to get this right? I mean, knowing you're from here and that you played here and just how much did this personally mean for you? To, to yeah, I, I definitely took it personally because it's on me. I'm the leader of the bunch. And no matter what, it's up to me to get it right. And the staff and I, you know, we had some knockdown drag out days, but I knew it was going to be better for us. And I put a lot of pressure on myself to get it right. And thank God it did turn in the right direction at the right time. From an X's and O's standpoint, we know what Houston's defensive numbers are. I know you notice you guys been running uh, cutters a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess, what can you tell us about that and why you think that has been so effective these last, over these one inch you guys have been on? I think it's a pressure release. It gives our guys movement. It's a pressure release. It moves. It gets everybody to touch the ball in the process of the offense, and it moves it from strong to weak. Where we're going to move the defense instead of being stagnant and running, playing one on one. That's what we were earlier in the season. Now with the ball movement, it makes teams have they can make a mistake, and we got to lay up with Tyler Harris while they were going on a run. So that Cutters offense has been so special for all of those reasons. Penny, uh, over here, just two for you. First of all. Um, between this year and last year, I mean, the, you guys were a, a second half in terms of the season team where, where you went on that run to the NIT championship. Do you feel any parallels with that, with this year, kind of just th that ever, all the pieces are coming together right now, kind of you know, late in the season? Um, second of all, just uh, what you thought about ALO for uh, honoring him on senior day and then also after the game, he was popping his Memphis jersey just to get that reception. I know he's been through some adversity here. Yeah, I think definitely the season's parallel because – Seemed like we got hot end of January, going into February, and you know, going into March, we were playing our best basketball. It just seems like at the beginning of the season, there's so much going on, so many distractions, and, and at a certain time, I'm able to kind of calm it down and get everyone on the same page. And that's what happened last year and what happened this year. And as far as Alo, man, what he's gone through uh, from decommitting from Wichita State to come to Memphis, having a lot of expectations, uh, starting as a freshman with Tyler Harris in the backcourt with Jeremiah Martin, uh, to go through all of those years and not to ever reach an NCAA tournament when he's probably one of the winningest players to ever come out of the, the city or the state of Tennessee or the city of Memphis from middle school to high school. And for him not to go out a winner was kind of bothering him. So to see what happened today, ironically, he's the only guy that walks out. He gets the ovation. He gets the attention. And I thought that was definitely form formidable for him as the guy, the 901 guy, he and Tyler, but definitely the guy that's been here four years straight through all of the adversity to get that warm welcome and to have a great game and to get a victory against a, a tough team. You couldn't have dreamed it any better. Um, it was less than two months ago you were sitting in that same seat at one of those difficult times where you had that that vent that went national and you took a lot of hits for that. I don't remember I, that. <laughs> I, know you, uh, I, I know you apologized for it, but... <laughs> That moment there maybe symbolized you galvanizing this team and what you've done since then. If you look back to that moment to now, I don't want to say how important was that moment, but did that maybe galvanize this team and you and this city to kind of make the push to what you're doing right now? I can say yes, because the boys responded to that 
like coach is fighting for us, it's time to to get on the right track. So they they definitely appreciated me doing that from not from the point of view of all the curse words, but kind of taking up for them. And that that changed the mindset in practice. I could just tell the next practice they were like a little more antsy and a little more energetic to like, all right, we gotta have coaches back. He has our back. Yeah.